Good evening. This side, Rahul Magan here is a Group Chief Executive Officer, Treasury Consulting, and also a venture capitalist. As we speak, Treasury Consulting is a multinational headquartered group. Today, on 18th April 2022, in our Facebook Connect, we would be talking a very important concept, which is the foreign portfolio investors. But before that, I would like to give you a good news, which is our Taka Tuck channel, which means the, uh, the short app on the Taka Tuck, we crossed near about 2000 plus short videos, 2000 plus short videos and probably by December 2022, we are planning to cross near about 4,000 plus videos. Today, I would be covering a very important topic, which is called foreign portfolio investors. You know, like I said that uh, every, probably almost every day, we are doing a Facebook Connect, in this, we would be talking a very important topic. So this is the uh, basically the article which I downloaded from the internet. And this article speaks about the foreign portfolio investors. So first of all, we need to understand that in the relevance of Indian market, strictly speaking, there are three kinds of investors. Number one, the retail investors. Number two, the foreign portfolio investors. Number three, the foreign, you know, the domestic institutional investors. But the biggest question is the foreign portfolio investors. That is what we need to learn today. The last few months being very volatile in the financial market. And I strongly feel that the next few months would continue to be volatile. Example, as we speak, oil is near about 113, while Japanese yen already touched 127. Euro is moving towards 1.009, while GBP is extremely volatile. So would be palladium, platinum, gold, silver, just like Today, gold was near about 1994, 194, very close to 2000, you would say, very close to 2000. But in the same day, rather after few hours, when it was almost 1995, gold touched to 1977. And as we speak, the gold is near about 1977 which means near from around 2000 around 2000 dollars to 1977 now you can very well expect or judge the volatility we are having in the gold silver almost everything we are having now foreign portfolio investors are consistently selling in india consistently selling in india that is a separate thing that the paid, sold and corrupt media of India is hardly bothered because they knew one thing that the Indian investors do not have any knowledge. They watch the TV. Since they watch the TV, they are being misguided almost every possible day. So let's take two live examples and no one can deny these live examples. Number one is the TCS, Tata Consultancy Services. When it comes to Tata Consultancy Services, TCS, a substantial hype is being created. Number one, 18,000 crores worth of buyback. Many media channels, paid speakers went and said that TCS would be touching 4,500. And I was like, what the hell you are talking? Like today, TCS is when at that point of time, TCS was around 3,600 and you are saying TCS would be touching 4,500. 
anyways as usual i was like let them speak you can check yourself where tcs is today even after substantial hype which is created by tata consultancy services investors lost heavily in tcs but that's a separate thing that the paid media will never cover this you know second is the infosys a substantial hype was generated around infosys also like infosys will move to 81900 infosys is this that something but the result came now since the result came we got to know that near about 48000 crores you heard me right 48000 crores worth of investors wealth eroded only in infosys 38 48000 crores and if you look at hindi media then hindi media created a substantial hype around infosys and this is one of the reason why the people in india specifically talking they are losing because they keep searching the hindi media now the article which i have got this clearly tells us that in the last 6 months ended march 2022 so in the last 6 months ended march 2022 the foreign portfolio investors quitted near about 1.48 lakh crores you heard me right 1.48 lakh crores which means 1 0.48 trillion it means 1 lakh 48000 crores 1 lakh 48000 crores worth of equities is sold by foreign portfolio investors in the last 6 months as we speak even in april they sold even in april they sold so from the last several months foreign portfolio investors are consistently selling in the indian market and they are not sparing any sector whether this is a real estate sector whether this is a finance sector whether this is a it sector whether this is the nbfc sector or any sector they are not sparing any sector so let's take an example there are many uh, it companies whose stocks were like oh my god it is like beyond the pocket of most of the investors i can name these stocks but i am not naming it but now look at their valuation their valuation came down heavily which is a clear evidence that the foreign portfolio investors are driving the indian market it's a clear cut evidence that foreign portfolio investors are driving the indian market but it also raises two important question number 1 if foreign portfolio investors sold 1.8 lakh crores or 1 lakh 48000 crores in the indian market then who bought it of course domestic institutional investors bought it common sense but if domestic institutional investors bought it then in which script they invested because we have seen in the latest past that the domestic institutional investors invested in the loss making companies which include zomato paytm nikea policy bazaar car trade devnani international barbecue nation and many other loss making companies they invested in these loss making companies but unfortunately this granularity of the data is not available as far as the india is concerned henceforth it is difficult to tell but probably sooner or later we would get to know in which scripts domestic institutional investors invested but having said that from the data which i received from the internet and i'm definitely planning a detailed analytical video on my youtube channel this data is a evidence that indian market is 100% controlled by foreign institutional investors because one day the stock move higher other day the stock go down if 
foreign institutional investors are buying, stocks go higher. If they are selling, stocks go down. This is how it works. But please be note that there are many headwinds we have in the upcoming time, which includes the US interest rate. US has already raised interest rate by 25 bips. And I strongly feel that US would be raising this, this meeting, which is happening in May by another 50 bips. Market is indicating that they are going to be increasing by 50 bips. Of course, I'm not in the favor of 50 bips, but having said that if US would increase by 50 bips, it would be a hard lending for US as well as for the emerging market. By hard lending, it means the markets across the world will come down because common sense that the institutional investors would be getting 50 bips higher in the US compared to emerging markets. In this scenario, the India would be under immense pressure to increase the interest rate. And if India increase the interest rate, then MSME, micro and small industry, the medium term industry and rest all would collapse, completely collapse because India ground reality is far different than what is being projected in the media. More than five top automobile companies close their shops in India. More than one or two telecommunication companies close their shop in India. More than eight banks top either wind it up or trim it down in India. And the list of the examples is very, very long. Henceforth, we really need to understand that if US would be raising the rates by 50 bips, then the whole Asia needs to follow this. China is secure because of their FX position, but India is not secure in their FX position because India NIIP net international investment position. And by the way, 99% of the investors, I repeat, 99% of the investors are unaware what the hell NIIP stands at and what is the meaning of NIIP. So if Fed would hike the rate, RBI would be pushed and if RBI would hike the rate even by 25 bips, then the Indian economy, which is already collapsed, it would collapsed more. And if it would be collapsing more, you know the end result. So if we go with this data, which I have, which clearly states that foreign institutional investors sold 1.48 lakh crores or 1 lakh 48,000 crores, I strongly feel that they would be selling more in the upcoming time. Number one is the US interest rate. Number two, the China Taiwan factor. Number three, the United States interest rates and not to mention Russia and Ukraine. We do not know when this war would be ending. But as we speak, there are hardly, I repeat, there are hardly any chances which we can see, which make us sure that, in, that this war will at least tune it down. It is not at all happening. Having said that, to conclude, I request the investors to be very, very careful because of the fact that Indian domestic institutional investors, they, you know, cannot be in the picture for long. Let it be, let I, I would like to let you know, they are short term players. And if foreign institutional investors would continue to sell, and by the way, the probability is on the higher side, then we may see the domestic institutional investors will raise their hands. As government is going to sell LIC, who, by the way, is the largest institutional investor as we speak, this would have negative repercussion on the market. Probably the government will get 60,000, 70,000 crores. That's a separate thing. But on market, this would have negative repercussion. 
this is what I would like to cover in this uh, Facebook Connect today. This is Rahul Magan from Treasury Consulting Group. Your new R number 9899242978. I repeat, you knew my number 9899242978. Thank you and uh, have a great time. Ahead. Good evening friends, this is Rahul Magan here as a Group Chief Executive Officer, Treasury Consulting and also a Venture Capitalist. As we speak, Treasury Consulting is a multinational headquartered group and 100% profitable. Like I promised that every day I would be shooting a Facebook Live. So today I'm shooting yet again Facebook Live. But having said that, first of all, I'm having a very great news. And the great news is our OTT platform, over the top platform, is expanding very fast. And now we are adding many more series in our OTT platform. Very soon, you will see the regular updates of OTT platform on the social media. It is just a matter of time. It is nothing but an ad tech platform. But unlike Pyjus and all, we are profitable. That's an important point. Today, I would like to cover a very important topic, which is nothing but the HDFC and HDFC bank merger. You know that I am a person of data. I never speak until otherwise I have the data. If I have the data, I speak. If I do not have the data, I do not speak. And you know that now I have made a habit that whatever data I am getting on the social network, I take a printout of that. And from that printout, I would be making the YouTube videos. So this time I got the printout of HDFC and HDFC bank merger. You can refer that printout. This is a latest printout taken today, which is 19th April 2022 from the social media. Of course, a detailed video in that regards would be coming on YouTube channel very soon. When HDFC announced the merger, in fact, you remember when TikTok was there, I was talking about HDFC Bank, about Deepak Parekh, about many people of HDFC. Then I got the threatening call, you know. And when HDFC Bank announced HDFC Bank merger, I came on Facebook and clearly said that it would end up as a mistake. You can go to Facebook and check I said this or not. On the same day of the merger, I went on the Facebook and said that this would end up as a mistake. And today, as we speak, the media is claiming that the HDFC bank so-called merger wiped out 2.5 lakh crores. 2.5 lakh crores worth of investor wealth. And this is what I warned on the same day when HDFC Bank announced that merger. You know guys, the biggest problem in India the biggest problem in India is that people do not know how to study the balance sheet. And we simply run on the media reports. So tomorrow, if I'm just giving a hypothetical example, 
if tomorrow there is a news came that indusind bank is merging with bank of america it's an example then people will start buying indusind bank or maybe day after there is a news coming that sbi is merging with hdfc example then people will start buying sbi they will not look at the balance sheet so let me take the balance sheet the balance sheet study is the most important thing which an investor should do and specifically talking when it comes to banks so probably again an example tcs is merging with infosys example okay we can take this probably we can make guesses on this we can invest based on the presumption but when it comes to bank when it comes to non banking financial corporation then the story is different and the story is we need to study the balance sheet whether the balance sheet is supporting both or not but unfortunately indian investor really not interested to study the balance sheet and see this is the live evidence i have taken this from the internet you can yourself check from the internet 2.5 lakh crores i repeat 2.5 lakh crores worth of investor wealth is wiped out have you seen any media house any paid anchor or anyone talking about this never they will not even touch it an indian investor he is hardly bother about the balance sheet so let me give you few facts on page number 2 of this article i again repeat i would be making a detailed video on the youtube channel once i get the time but if i go to page number 2 on the day the merger is announced the both stock hdfc and hdfc uh, bank surged by 14% 14% and added 1 lakh crore of investor wealth which means that investors just entered in this stock without having any analysis because it's common sense that to study the balance sheet you need at least 2 to 3 days and if on the day of the announcement you entered in the stock it's a clear example that you not studied the balance sheet and common sense you simply entered it now i'll tell you something more these all are the brokerage firm i have raised my voice multiple times against the brokerage firm not only india but also the foreign brokerage firm we all understand that how they actually work morgan stanley who is currently facing the block trades probe by security and exchange commission every day advising indian investors to buy this or to sell this and if you ask the research report they will never give you this is morgan stanley credit suisse whose own share price is 7 dollar and name the fraud which credit suisse not done even recently they being fined they are acting as a foreign brokerage in india ubs the share price is around 11 dollar to 15 dollars they are advising the indian investors to buy this and sell this and i am never short of examples i am never short of examples but indian regulators are merely watching merely watching no action and it would never happen so i always challenge these brokerages firm 
that how are they giving the targets. If you have guts, then upload the research report on the public upload the research report in public domain and let people study it. So Edelweiss is giving a target, you know, before uh, of 1860. Kotec Institutional 1650, MK Global 1950, Namura 17.5, Yes Securities 1668, Yes Securities, Yes Security, it is from Yes Bank. And what did happen with the Yes Bank? We all are aware about that. Even after that, they are giving recommendations in the public domain. So this evidence is sufficient to prove that investors who never study the balance sheet, who do not know how to study the balance sheet and invest in stock only because of hype, they always end up in losses. And in this case of HDFC, the investors lost two 0.5 lakh crores but please be rest assured please be rest assured that indian regulator indian media indian newspaper magazines or any form of digital media except our youtube channel is not going to be questioning them on our youtube I would be letting you know why this merger would fail. And this is called the Great Indian Circus. I call this the Great Indian Circus, whereby anyone can do anything. This is Rahul Pagan from Treasury Consulting Group. You knew my personal number 9899242978. Have a great time. Good evening. This side Rahul Magan here as a Group Chief Executive Officer, Treasury Consulting and also a Venture Capitalist. As we speak, Treasury Consulting is a multinational headquartered and profitable group. Before I start today Facebook Connect, I'm extremely pleased that we launched more series in our TRFX Academy. So TRFX is nothing but our OTT platform over the top. And we launched the trial series on our OTT platform, which means that now people can enjoy the trial version of our OTT platform for 30 days, just 100 rupees. And I'm assuring you that we are set to compete with Amazon and Netflix very soon. It is a matter of time. We are set to compete with both of them. Today, I would be covering a very important topic, which is titled around a company known as Byju's. To confirm, I have downloaded an article from the Economic Times website. And this is a very recent article. This article is an eye opener from a figure standpoint and analytics is completely ours. Of course, we are also planning a detailed video in that regards on our YouTube channel as well. We all know that Pyjus is a loss making company. There is hardly any doubt regarding this fact. 
but unfortunately the paid sold and corrupt indian media would never like to discuss this because common sense they are busy in discussing few selected corporates or their bosses do not want the facts to discuss guys you would be surprised to know that byju's claim to be a 18 billion dollar company 18 billion dollar which is approximately 1 lakh 30 to 1 lakh 40 thousand crores somewhere in between 1 lakh 30 to 1 lakh 40 thousand crores and a loss making company like byju's claim to be a 18 billion dollar company but if you read this article you get statistics which probably the paid sold and corrupt indian media will never discuss this example byju's bought a company called white hat junior you heard me right white hat junior by paying 300 million dollars us dollars which means near about 2200 crores so a loss making company bought a company known as white high white hat junior by paying near about 300 million us dollars and this isn't the first time in july 2021 they acquired epic by paying 500 million dollars they acquired us based osmo by paying 120 million in january 2019 in july 2017 they acquired tutor vista at right from pearson they also acquired heavyweights like akash academy and many more companies the first and biggest question that is coming is from where the byju's is getting the money who is funding the byju's buying companies one by one by one because a loss making company cannot buy such you know i would say at a such big scale let it be honest they bought white hat junior and the purpose of white hat junior was to teach indian kids coding initial purpose was to teach indian kids coding so let me read this articles most notable startup under its umbrella that is facing trouble is online coding platform white hat junior which they bought in july 2020 paying near about 300 million us dollars while white hat junior byju's aimed to taking coding to the world from india hiring teachers on the contractual basis remember teachers on the contractual basis White Hat Junior posted a massive loss do you know in financial year 21 White Hat White Hat Junior got the operating revenue of mere 484 crores it means only 484 crores worth of revenue is generated by White Hat Junior and as against 484 crore of revenue they reported a loss of 1690 crores 1690 crores which precisely mean on a very approximate basis that to earn 1 rupee you are losing more than 3 rupees to earn 1 rupee you are losing more than 3 rupees this is called the startup business model of india i repeat this is called the startup business model of india you would also be surprised to know that you know the company told ians which is a media forum it had asked its nearly 3000 sales and support employees to report to either mumbai or gurugram 
and out of total 5000 strong workforce it include teacher which are on the contractual basis and hence not full time employee this is what coming in the media white house junior has also shut its school division that last year targeted to take its flagship coding curriculum to 10 lakh school students do you know guys india media is a fraud media there is no doubt about that because whether it is paytm ola uber swiggy zomato lenskart delivery oyo byju's and many such companies the media never reports the fact like today i was looking at ola electric financial statements on the public domain and i was shocked i was shocked that operating revenue is i don't have words i'll have a separate video please be rest assured and if you look at the media then the indian media is giving a hype to the ola electric but the reality is completely different similarly is the byju's I have made many videos on these startups and I hardly bother about the feedback like dislike comments and all these things but one thing I am always certain is that this startup model is now busting because an academy you know fired 1000 employees I am saying this it's a public data which is talking it about an academy having the money to invest in ipl indian premier league i hope you are watching ipl i don't have time to watch ipl but if you watching ipl you would have got to know that an academy is doing the advertisement they have the money to advertise in ipl but they cut 1000 jobs did any media house in india dared to cover this never never you know upgrad amitabh bachchan is promoting upgrad mba amitabh bachchan himself is not mba but he is promoting upgrad mba when it's when we speak about amitabh bachchan then one thing is very clear that this man can promote crypto this man can promote bank this man can promote you know i would say the jewelry business this bank can, man can promote the pharmaceutical business probably the fmcg business the scooty business and now he is promoting mba because in bollywood you do not need degree certificate experience expertise and knowledge to make things happen that's the bloody point and the whole regulatory framework of india whole regulatory framework of india is watching amitabh bachchan who even do not know b of banking is promoting banks idfc first bank this is amitabh bachchan and the whole regulatory framework is watching like a gandhi ji ke teen bandar you know this 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 is indian system and you would also surprised to know that the upgrad lost near about 211 crores in financial year 21 but still they are unicorn and look at the white house junior i'm not yet done according to the public information Baijus recently launched 80 physical tuition centers and plans to increase it to 500 in 200 cities by 2022, providing employment to around 10,000 people, including teachers. A loss making company, Baijus, is now opening up the physical center. Now, what is the meaning of physical center, guys? The meaning of the physical center is your cost is fixed. You have a center, whether this center is, 
you know, 100 square feet, 200 square feet, 300 square feet, 400 square feet or whatever the space is, but your cost is fixed, which is facility cost, probably the security cost, fixtures and furnitures, the electricity cost, the insurance cost, the hell lot of cost. The whole world after COVID and as we speak, COVID is again shaping up. We have seen COVID in Shanghai, Hong Kong, South Korea and many parts of the globe. So COVID is again shaping up and the whole world is now going online. But Baiju's who claim to be an EdTech platform, EdTech, what the meaning of EdTech? The meaning of EdTech is very clear that education technology, which means online, is now opening up tuition center and they launched 80 physical tuition center. You know, what would be the cost of these 80 physical tuition center? And what would be the cost of the 500 uh, tuition centers to come in 200 cities? Do we knew this about? And this is getting done by a loss making company known as Baichu's. And the whole media is quiet. I'll tell you one more interesting fact. The founder of Baiju's, Mr. Ravindran, has reportedly financed his recent 400 million investments in a company through a debt he raised from multiple international banks. So even the funding which is happening in the company is now being raised in the form of debt. Now debt means interest cost. Interest cost means EPS and your EPS, which is earning per share is already negative. This is the realistic buy choose we have. You know, even Einstein, Edison and Steve Jobs together cannot justify 18 billion valuation of buy choose. But the whole regulatory framework of India is silent. Now, what do you call this? What do you call this? Do you need any more evidence? I don't need any more evidence. And I hardly bother about like, dislike, comments and all these things on my YouTube, Facebook or any other social media platform. But I continue to reflect the fact in the public domain because even today, Goldman Sachs cannot challenge Treasury Consulting. Who the hell is these startups who are consistent loss making and claiming to be a unicorn? By Jews. Detailed YouTube video on the cards. This is Rahul Magan from Treasury Consulting Group. You knew our personal number 9899242978. I repeat 9899242978. Have a great time ahead.